and this is section 8 of Mastering Qt Programming, which covers Qt on mobile. So let's go ahead and get started with the Qt widgets. In this video, we're going to cover installing the Qt Android environment, setting up Qt Creator for Android deployment, and building for release. Now, setting up for deploying to Android is challenging. You'll need to install the Android Standard Development Kit and the Android Native Developer Kit. You'll need to check with the Getting Started with Qt for Android, but as of right now, the recommended version for Android NDK is actually 10e, so you need to keep that in mind as well. In addition to the SDK and NDK, you'll also need the Java Development Kit or OpenJDK. And then in addition to that, you'll need to either compile Qt for the architecture that you're targeting, download it using the Qt Online Installer, or install it using your Package Manager. So let's get started. I'll walk you through each step that you need to do. So the first thing we need to do is download Android Studio. So open Google and Google download Android Studio. And if you click the first link, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom until you see the command line tools only. So you need to download the appropriate uh, zip file depending on your platform and unzip it somewhere that you can find it. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and get the Android Native Development Kit or NDK. So Google download Android NDK and click this link and scroll down because we're gonna actually go into the archives, agree to the terms when they pop up and then scroll all the way down and you can see the Android NDK revision 10E. So again, download whatever platform that you're on and unzip it somewhere that you can find it. Sweet, now let's get the Java development kit. So if you have a package manager like you're on Linux, go ahead and use that. Otherwise, Google download JDK, scroll down, click the first link, scroll down and you'll see this JDK download, click that. And then again, go ahead and get to the file on whatever platform that you're running on and then do the appropriate thing. So if you're on Windows, you can go ahead and execute it. On Linux, you'll need to untar it, etc. Now, lastly, you'll need to either compile Qt, download it using the online installer, or install it using your package manager. In my opinion, the easiest way to do it is using the Qt online installer. So if you Google download Qt, you can download this installer, and you'll click through a couple things, and once you get to this screen, you'll see a bunch of Qt versions. So go whatever your version compiling for. So I've been doing this in 5.10.1. Just click this arrow. And you can see that we've got a bunch of options here. What we're looking for are the Android ones. So we've got the Android x86 and the Android ARM 7. Go ahead and pick whichever platform you're targeting. So if you're targeting, we'll be doing x86 for this tutorial, which you can use the other one. And you'll just go ahead and click that and go ahead and install it. So that's everything that we need installed. Let's go ahead and link everything up using Qt Creator. So open Qt Creator, go to Tools, Options. In the left-hand slide, you'll click Devices, and then at the top here, you'll go ahead and select Android. And remember, we downloaded the JDK, the SDK, and the NDK, Android SDK and Android NDK. So you'll need to go ahead and tell Qt where these files are at. So use the browse button and go ahead and select that and it'll tell you if everything's okay. Do that for the JDK, the SDK, and the NDK. I've got everything in opt and it'll tell you if everything is set up. Once you're done with that, go over to the left-hand slide and click the build and run and go to the Qt versions. Now, if you don't see your Android version, like I've got Android x86, you'll need to add it. So go ahead to the right here, click add. And then this is a little bit tricky. So for me, example, mine is in the op directory, Qt. And so this is probably what you'll see wherever you installed it, is you'll see a bunch of information. If you click the version that you installed and then the platform that it's compiled for, you'll go into bin. And the thing that you want is the qmake or the qmake.exe. So go ahead and click that. And uh, it's just gonna tell me that I've already got one registered, but that'll actually have it pop up in this section right here so you can go ahead and build with it. Now, lastly, you're gonna need either a device that runs Android or an emulator. So the one word of caution, if you actually have your own device, is to again, check with the Getting Started with Qt for Android. There are a couple things that you need to configure for your development hosts. If you're on Windows, they've got a couple of extra packages. And if you're on Linux, they've got a couple extra packages. So make sure that you actually install those 
as the documentation suggests. Now, if you don't actually have an Android device, it's no worries. We can actually run an emulator, um, but we will actually have to download a system image for that emulator. So I'll show you how to do that. If you go back to devices and go to Android, scroll all the way to the bottom and click the SDK manager. And then from here, you just need to figure out which version of Android you're targeting. So which API version. So for example, if you're interested in Android version seven, you can click this and you can download whatever uh, system image that you want. So here, for example, the x86 Atom system images. You can also see we've got the 64-bit uh, versions for that. We've got the uh, seven versions. So it, it just depends on what you want to target. For these examples, I'll be using the uh, x86 version. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate downloading that for the Android 8 platform. So if you go here and we'll get the Intel x86, I and mean, you should be able to see this. I just have everything blown up so large. I have to actually scroll over. We'll go ahead and click install and then we'll click apply and it'll tell us that everything is going to be updated. Now for me, this is actually going to fail because it's in my op directory and I'm not running Qt creator as the root user currently. So if that's the same thing for you, make sure that you're running with the correct permission sets. Otherwise this will fail. And then you'll just go ahead and click OK and it'll download everything for you. So once your system image downloads successfully, pat yourself on the back because we've got everything installed for deployment. So now let's go ahead and we'll open up our widgets example. And then we'll switch off. We'll go ahead and select the Android for x86 version and select configure project. Now, if we go ahead and click the run directory, we're going to have something weird pop up. We're going to have this Android developer pop up and we need to actually create a new device or a new emulator that we're going to use. Um, if you don't have one, that's OK. We can just scroll down here and click create Android virtual device. We'll need to pass in a name, select the application binary interface and the targets API. And we don't need an SD card size, but you could also pass in that and select OK. And then we'll give it a second and our new created one will actually pop up and we'll select OK. Once your device has booted up, let's go ahead and actually run this one more time. But again, we're just going to go ahead and click build and select our test to device and select OK. And then we'll wait for that to go ahead and build in the bottom right hand corner you can see here. And it'll eventually pop up in our actual thing. Perfect. Now you see on the far right hand side, we've got a scroll bar that we can drag. And then if we click and change the color, we can actually change colors. So we've successfully demonstrated a uh, debug build for our Android emulator cute widgets. So let's go ahead and let's release this. So we're going to switch from the model debug to release and wait for that to update and we'll select build. We'll go back to projects and we'll go ahead and snag our build directory here. And once we change into that directory, you can see we want to go into the Android build and then we want to go into the build directory and then we want to go to outputs and finally the APK. Now I have both the Android build debug.apk and the Android build release signed APK. So uh, it will not build a released signed APK unless you have an actual signature set up, which we will cover in the next tutorial. So with that, we successfully demonstrated how to build for release, set up Qt Creator for deployment, and gone over installing the Qt Android environment for Qt widgets.